And since there are regards to all of the participants of Collins Conference, let me present, let me present um, the topic we are willing to discuss today. That is marking up dramatic text, a case study of seven stories by Maurice Panetch. Uh, my name is Natalia Hrecev. I am presenting on behalf of the team of scholars. Uh, that is Ivan Bechta and Anastasia Matrichuk. Um, the paper elucidates the process, challenges, and results of using computational linguistic tools uh, with a processing and pre computer techniques that is K for per personage utterance tagging in processing dramatic text. As the material for analysis, we've chosen the modern play Seven Stories of the Canadian playwright Maurice Panage, researched from the viewpoint of statistical indicators and textual conditions. Special attention is paid to statistical parameters of main personages in the play. Results obtained show numeric characteristics of such data. Number of meaning, maximal meaning, minimal meaning, range mode, median mean, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, standard error, and measurement error. This study is a part of larger research project on the creativity of Maurice Panage and the perception of his writings by translators. Presented in the paper is the preliminary algorithm for developing analytical findings concerning the reasons behind deviation within the aspect of statistical parameters of a source and target text. Further elaborations are forthcoming. In focus is the drama Seven Stories of Maurice Panish and its Ukrainian translation. Based on the acquired evidence, certain considerations are made regarding the usage of quantitative uh, uh, comparable analysis for further comparison of source text and target text, statistics and ratio findings. Now, why do we do it? Right? Thus, linguistic research determines an effective approach to the study of text using mathematical methods and tools in combination with computer technology, which open up horizons for the linguistic analysis of new broader perspective. A complete and comprehensive description of language and speech requires a diligent insight into both qualitative and quantitative features of linguistic objects. We are very much interested in these features, qualitative and quantitative, as seen from the translation studies perspective. Right? Thus, in here, we are talking about quantitative features, while the same project right, has the second um, counterpart, which is qualitative or purely philological, right? translation studies, human-centered feature and approach to the analysis. In addition, an approach towards and detailed study dramatic text as a unique literary genre is a separate challenge in current studies, which has special requirements within natural language processing tools, application, and text markup. Therefore, the study of Maurice Bonnet's playwork Seven Stories is relevant. The idea is that modern Canadian drama is the aspect little studied from numerous, uh, numerous viewpoints. In here, we talk about the philological, translatological, rhetorical, uh, however, least studied from the angle of mathematical, uh, linguistics, and statistics. In order to understand the specifics of dramatic works, the concept of author's style, postmodern literature to which the work under study belongs, um, we uh, have taken the original of Maurice Spanish and the translation by Ivan Krishvalushi um, as an example of the postmodern literature peace fighting, which is challenging um, in the perspective that um, the drama translation is um, important from the viewpoint of the so called well-known uh, readability and stageability, right? Thus, it, it needs to be mentioned that this one is intended for the publication, for the reading. However, drama text initially um, is written um, for staging, right? And these even minor deviations within the original text and the translation, we mean the length of the utterances, specific coefficients, right, has dr uh, tremendous and dramatic influence on the Ukrainian receiver while staged in the theater. So how do we do it? A number of actions were performed for statistical analysis. 
Therefore, the analysis took place in the following stages. The books of the original text and the translation were pre-scanned for further manipulations using Abifying Reader software. Afterwards, it was converted from PDF to Docs to make it possible to work with text in terms of markup. The correct formatting of text was checked and discrepancies between scanned PDF file and text documents were detected. It was normalized in the MS Word editor. Next, the focus was on selection of text marking up system according to its features, implementation of proper text for the original work, implementation of proper text for the translated version, then calculated text results were processed using the Python, uh, Python programming language. Afterwards, the results of the statistical parameters, such as number of meanings, maximal meanings, and so on, were analyzed and described. The original text and its translation was marked up using the same marking rulers. Thus, the following text marking were chosen according to the features of the dramatic text. Um, first, that is the uh, CHDR, right? These are the paired marking which is used to indicate a solid whole part of the text related to a particular character. Then we have CNM, that is paired marking which is used to indicate the name of the character with a colon. Then we have the class S, paired marking which is used to denote the sentence in the speech of the character. And then we have uh, MTR, these are paired marking which is used to mark all authors remarks throughout the text. Thus what have we got? Having analyzed the distribution of the number of words in a sentence by absolute and relevant frequency, we have obtained numeric characteristics to all of the characters of the drama in the original and the translation. Next, we will give the example of Charlotte's results and findings. Thus, what we have got, right, that is supposed, um, um, that is the character, then the beginning of, right, the, the proper name of the character, that is Charlotta. Then we have the beginning of the sentence she is um, using, she is producing. Then we shift um, to the next character, Rodney. And then we have uh, the writer's, so to say, individual remarks, right? In here, that is threatening um, the indication of the playwright himself. Then suppose, uh, um, as an example of Charlotta, we have the whole source text data. Uh, in here, we may find that 1 equals to 58, 2 equals to 4, 3 occurs only once, and 4 occurs once. The data for Charlotte presupposes that the absolute frequency of sentence length is with word number 1 equals to 58. Consequently, with word number 2 equals to 4, with word number 3 equals to 1, with word number 4 equals to 1. Okay. While um, when we talk about the translation, we see that the most frequent are sentences with the number of words equal to 1. That is 35 positions, right? Uh, 4 equals to 17 and 5 to 13. The last two are the least frequent, right? So we have 12 of uh, uh, the sentence with 12 words only occurs once in the text. On the basis of the data, though, the following calculations are made of number of meanings, maximal meaning, minimal meaning, range mode, median mean, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, standard error, and measurement error. That was, thus, we come up with the contrasting um, illustration right, of the source text, that is the original, and the target text, that is the translation, uh, translation concerning Charlotte herself. Thus, we can see the first discrepancy that the number of meanings in the source text equals to 64, while in the translation that is twice as much. Right? That is why um, we presuppose that there should be some reasons behind it. Right? But um, to shift our sights to that reasons, to that philological fundamentation, right? Um, we need to um, to, keep, to keep in mind, right, um, and to maybe try and verify what were the reasons, right? So there are those because of the language differences, right? Was it because of the translator's choice? Was it because of certain imagery of the text, 
that could not be explained and compensated otherwise in the text. Right? So the next step, that is actually the philological analysis taking, in, taking into account the context of the utterance and the context of each separate um, sentence and information load and communicative act as such. Um, Right, so in here we see that characteristics as depicted in the picture, right, so the number of meanings 64, uh, in the original and 113 in the translation, uh, maximal meaning equals to 4, while maximal meaning in the translation equals to 12, and so on. Concluding, the main advances of statistical linguistics have been retrieved in the article. The original Canadian play has been compared with the corresponding translated text in terms of statistical parameters, which has never been done before. We have verified absolute and relevant distribution, probability measurement, and um, other numeric characteristics in the sentence of both texts. Why do we need this? The paper is of practical and applied value. However, we believe that it has the potential right, um, for further theorization and a theoretical approach, maybe formulating certain hypotheses. Okay, but at this point, it is proven that bilingual drama texts are well adoptable for natural language processing and reveal promising outcomes when it talks about drama texts. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, we do hope that we have provoked a number of questions um, which we would love to answer or maybe you have some remarks or comments on the topic discussed. Thank you so much.